Hi, let me show you how to make the easiest campfire you've ever made, and while you're enjoying the fire, you can make biochar. Biochar is made in a low oxygen environment, so I'm using this charcoal grill. This is a Weber 22-inch charcoal grill that I picked up at Lowe's for about $110. Uh, I buried it just a little bit so that the holes at the bottom are covered in the dirt so the air can't get in here. Um, and if you have an older grill that has holes rusted through it, just bury it down further so that the holes are covered in the dirt and the oxygen does not get into the, into the grill. And you, if you want to use it on a hard surface, you can. Let me show you in my driveway, I'll set it down. And just throw a little dirt on it to cover the holes so that the air doesn't get in. It'll work fine. So let's talk about the top down burn, which is really the easiest and most efficient campfire that you can make. Uh, you want to take your fuel, I'm using split firewood, and put it in layers, with each layer going a uh, different direction, kind of a crisscross manner. Um, and you want to put the wood in tight against each other so that when the embers fall down, they only fall down one layer. And that's, that's what you want. You, you want the top to start burning, the top layer to stop, start burning, and then the second layer to catch and start burning, and finally the last layer to burn at the end. Um, if you're using uh, branches, you want the bigger branches, the wider branches to be at the bottom and the and work your way up so that the top layer is as small as branches. And then all you do is light it on top. So I've got some kindling, put it up here, get the kindling going. It will ignite the first layer, which will, after time, ignite the second layer, and down to the bottom layer. You don't have to tend it at all. It's going to be a beautiful fire without any tending. And then, at the end, when the fire starts to go down, you want to put the fire out so the ashes don't burn to ash. You can do that two ways. One, you can just put the lid on it, put these vents closed, and that'll smother the fire. Or you can throw, uh, or you can spray it with water. Both work fine, and you'll end up with some great biochar. So last night I did this with about that much wood. It weighed 28 pounds, and I was able to make about seven pounds of what looks to be really good biochar. I ran over that with my car to make it small, and uh, uh, you'll need to charge it, of course, in any way that you like to charge your biochar. Uh, let me show you the video that I enjoyed last night. Again, I just lit it on the top, I let it burn down. I never touched the fire until it was time to put out the embers. Many fuels will work, so long as the pile is not too dense. Gases need to be able to circulate in the pile. For example, in Africa, dry corn stalks, cassava stems, bean stalks, and banana peels all work well. But sawdust and rice holes don't seem to work. Women in Africa spend an average of two hours per day collecting firewood from forests for cooking fuel, subjecting themselves to sexual assault and animal attacks. This method allows them to switch from collecting firewood, which is largely non-renewable, to using crop waste from their farms, which is 100% renewable. And they make biochar to greatly improve their crop production and to sequester carbon. In Africa, women use a hole in the ground instead of a charcoal stove. The hole works great.